All righty. That should do for preamble while I was getting everything set up. If you've not watched Made in Abyss, that's literally my favorite show ever, and that's that was music from that soundtrack. How's it going, everybody? All nobody. But I don't care. I just kind of felt like playing Black Mesa, and since I seem to get a relatively okay amount of viewers, all things considered, for me at least, when it comes to streaming Half Life, or when I do stream Half Life, but I figured, uh, why not? I'm in the mood to play Black Mesa, so let's uh, play Black Mesa. I was testing some stuff out, and there was a there was a weird issue that was occurring kind of earlier where uh it was just auto firing for no obvious reason i got that problem sorted out but if it comes back then well i don't know i guess the phrase would be i think i've got it figured out got energy drink mm. i've got balls of steel and i guess we're just gonna start yeah kind of want to do the tram ride but that's that's basically asking me to do minutes of unprovoked commentary which is gonna completely run out after about 30 minutes anyway so hmm. it's just uh let's skip the tram ride and just get on into it in fact if i was smart i'd just go to unforeseen consequences but i do kind of want to nuke that casserole one thing I'm kind of worried about, though, is uh, there's parts of this game that are not very well optimized and do tank my computer. Morning, Mr. Freeman. So we're going to have an even bigger problem now that I'm eating up processor space. You know, A part of me kind of wants to see if I can do the, uh, the purple hat run, but I don't think I will. For those who don't know... Uh, there's a Easter egg. Come on. I can crouch. Crouch, jump, Gordon free. Oh, you can't even jump off. How is this a Half Life game if you can't kill yourself in the first seven minutes? Yo! I'll sell you out. Here's the thing with Black Mesa. I probably should have said this earlier, but I just want to get into it, so I still, so I'm still yapping. I actually prefer this to the original Half Life in a number of key ways, in the fact that I like the, I like the visuals more. In fact, if I had to pick a favorite Half Life game, I may have said this before while I was playing uh, Half Life Two. But if I had to pick a favorite Half-Life game, it'd probably be this. Just a full remake of Half-Life 1. Because I like Half-Life 1. Like, I've played through it... Oh, boy. Um, At least brutal Half-Life. I've played through probably a dozen times or more. And... I could get through brutal Half-Life in about four and a half hours if I sat down and really tried. At least I could. Can't really do that anymore. Got the wrong air like Mr. Freeman. Yeah, apparently I did. That's gonna be helpful later. See ya. I just prefer this over most other versions of Half-Life or Half-Life games because I think Half-Life 1 has... Uh, whoops. I need to go this way. Half-Life 1 has really good... It doesn't, it has the same quality of pacing as Half-Life 2, it just doesn't take as long. What's for dinner? It is death. That was hardly the kind of explosion I was hoping for. You think you can fix the vending machine too, college boy? Sir. It is now fixed. Um, that was you know who's lunch. Uh, Doctor Breen, or Doctor? Was was it Doctor Magnuson in Half Life Two who would say something along the lines of your casserole? We all have to wear these ridiculous ties. It felt like it. In fact, it's kind of weird. There's a mod to put 
whoever it was. No toilet paper. No toilet paper. <laughs> Have some scratchy paper. Hello? Have some scratchy paper. Oh, thank heavens. I'm in dire need of some toilet paper. Well, I didn't just throw it over there for no reason, dinghy. But I think there's a mod to put the correct personnel in place of uh, uh, whoever it was. Juice casserole, you blow up. So it's kind of kind of bizarre that they didn't do that for this, because Kleiner and Eli Vance, I couldn't think of his name, are in this game. Sort of tie it directly to Half Life Two. But, uh, not Magnuson or whomever it was who, uh, had the casserole. I'm talking way too much about the casserole. I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> a barrel. Hmm. Get my tuchus slapped with a 45 meter whip. Working as a team. That looks like a... That looks like something out of Fallout. The little text box. Oh, look, it's the environment we're about to get to. Because they couldn't bother to create a new environment just for those advertisements. Uh, lazy sods. Wait, working on a game for 15 years? Practically for free? Ugh. I thought that said hard on it. It says hit on. Now, what has happened since I played Half-Life 2? Consequently, Bioshock and quit on Bioshock because I always do I just I don't really like Bioshock 1 too much like I did like it I respect it and I, I beat it and all that stuff but nah I, I it's that's a hard game for me to go back to because I just don't really like the gameplay it's nothing to worry about. just really squishy and weird and all that stuff conversely anything made in the source engine is snappy and fun like the feeling of movement in Source Engine games is just great to me. Kind of talking of Source Engine games, um, that, uh, oh, what's it called? It's that Warhammer game that came out. It was, uh, War... Flim Flammin. It's that one in the, the dirty, gringy, gringy, grungy city. Well, anyway, but my point being, the developers of that, uh, Strumon, also developed Space Wing Death Hulk, which apparently was okay, not very good, not very good, but it was okay. But before that, they did a Source Engine RPG, first person RPG, called I Divine Cybermancy, which I've, ugh, I try that game like once every year or two, and I seriously sit down, it's like, this will be the day I get into this game. And then I get distracted by boobies or literally anything else because it's just, it's a pain in the butt. But it's a, it's brilliant in just how it almost works and then completely, completely just poops the bed on the actual execution. Now there's one thing about Black Mesa that surpasses even Half-Life 2 and that's the amount of dynamic shadows like the dynamic lighting this game is actually a really good showcase of what the source engine can do as you know sort of the source engine as most would know it because i mean any engine can be pushed farther and i'm no source engine 2 is going to be far beyond this but man i I just can't help but really love the amount of dynamic lighting in this. Because apparently Crowbar Corrective is like, eh, cor corrective. Crowbar Collective was like, well, we can have all these dynamic lights and shadows. So why don't we? Even if it doesn't run very well, just the fact that we can is enough reason to do so. Okay, Stanley. I don't know how much longer I can abide these perfunctory tasks. I need more time 
for myself. Ha! Huh. Don't kid yourself. You wouldn't know what to do with free time if you even had any. Oh, I feel, I feel that. It's like I keep thinking to myself, I should really take a vacation. And then I'm like, well, what do I do on my two days off? What do I, what would I do with seven days off? Seven to ten days off. I'd do even less. And this, this guy is like, hey, hey, I'm college educated. Well, bleh. bully for you. If someone's asking you to push a button, it's because that button needs to be pushed, not because you're educated or not educated. Hey, dude, I'm going to take your coffee. I, I need to take your coffee. I need to test the shadows over here. To see, see if they put in dynamic lighting where it wasn't even necessary. Because that could just be a painted shadow, isn't it? Uh, no. Is it? You'll be called on the carpet in no time if you keep this up. Called on the carpet? What? Well, I mean, if you're talking about going to Breen's office, I'd do that 20 years from now. And then I'm a piss on his rug. Because it really tied the room together. Uh, here he is. I'm afraid we'll be deviating a bit from standard office <sighs> procedure today, Gordon. Yes, yes. But deviating. This is a rare opportunity for us. This is the purest sample we've seen yet. And potentially the most unstable. Now, as long also, as you can zoom that, in this one. I think the original mod, I don't know how you can which I Although did actually play, the original Black Mesa mod, extremely unlikely uh, there's quite a few differences between the original free mod and this paid full release. Uh, mostly gameplay. You're right. But they're, uh... We have complete I have to say... The... I think... I don't remember there being a zoom button. It was... There was, like, weird omissions, and it... They tried to make it feel more like Half-Life 1, like, with the movement speed and stuff. I think they slowed the movement speed down just a little bit for the final release. Because you can sprint, for one thing. Like, this is basically how fast Half-Life 1 ran, like... Gordon was trying to break the land speed record with his toeses. So. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take this chair to hell. Mount dismount ladder. No Valve game, even Valve byproducts know how to do ladders. Sure. I mean, C's get degrees. That's how I got here. I love the detail. Needs fixing ASAP. Emergency shutdown. There's a lot of little environmental storytelling in this version in particular. Very good. Like, they put in the freaking work. Power to stage one emitters in three, two, one. More dynamic lighting for the hell of it. Stage two emitters activating now. Uh, Gordon, we cannot predict how long the system can operate at this level, nor how long the reading will take. Uh, please work as quickly as you can. Uh, sure. Overhead capacity. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. Actually. There's one thing, uh, what was it? There was an achievement for not pushing the button, but I waited quite a while and it still never gave it to me. So, I sort of, I just sort of gave up after a while. Oh yeah, bro, I just got a new turbo for my Miata. Oh, the v -Tech's kicking in, bro! It's not even a Honda. Get me out of here! My life is too precious and handsome. Uh -huh. Green. What will your last words be? Mine is... Well, nuts. 
like staring into the Hulk's anus. It's just a green light and then it's over. Whoa, what party did I go to? See, I, I, I kind of want to go back to the original mod and just see some of the little changes like that. Because they, they did have an... Oh, well, I tell a lie. I think it was a questionable ethics. They added some Zen scenery in there. Oh, I didn't pick up that suit battery from my locker. Well, that sucks. Guess I'm just gonna have to not suck monkeys. The thing is, I, I there's a 30 part playthrough that I did of this game on uh, my hard drive. So, I think the commentary there would be Arguably better. I'm just I'm just kind of doing this because I feel like playing Half-Life. I may as well uh, have a bit of a stream. Yeah, should have taken that vacation, dude, because you're kind of freaking out and toasted now, isn't it? And still, because they could get away with it. Oh, I was about to say dynamic lighting. Not really. Oh, sure, we're having a freaking containment emergency and everything else. Let's just take the elevator. That's against all safety protocols. I, I tried to warn them. I never I, they just would listen. Let alone create one. By Schrodinger's cat. He's alive. Got it. What Schrodinger cat? All the photographs. I can't reach anyone in the facility. We need to get to the surface and let someone know that we're stranded down here. There's sure. No telling what kind of danger is. Crap. I love the fact that the flashlight casts a shadow. I, I'm a sucker for really good lighting. And thus Lamar was born. Or appeared. Sure. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dynamic lighting bar. Okay. Stop. Now I want to understand. I don't understand how this goes. Like, because that's far more physics objects than most games do, and they're not actual physics objects. You can't pick them up now i'm not 100 percent certain how source engine works but my brain says that there's a way to that there's like some way to have oh there's an enemy come get some eh, loser but there's some way i think there's some way to like record mass physics interactions and then just have it uh it basically just plays out like an animation more than anything else also the zombie head crabs or the, the those crawling ones they move faster than their crawling animation and that has annoyed me ever since the original release also more dynamic lighting because why not uh, that's annoyed me since the original release. I hate it when games have walking or the animation is slower than the movement. I can't remember the first game to make me realize that, but I certainly noticed it in Tony Hawk's American Skateland. My gosh. Or Wasteland, sorry. Skateland was the DS one. Uh, not to exploit your death here, but do you have any suit battery for me, or do you just have two-dimensional fire? Yes, you do. Get off the ladder, Gordon! Grief. Valve games... <sighs> Ugh. They can't climb ladders. You... Ugh. 
Ah. Ender Magi. Whoa. Frickin' lightning trigger over here. He's fired that thing like three times in one second. Oh. Jamal, mate. Oh, you think? That lighting's dynamic, too. In some cases... I just kind of prefer to have the guard die so I can get the freaking pistol. But owie! You breasticle. I'm leaving your party and not coming back. This sleepover is over. Wait. Come on. I don't think he does. Now for this old chestnut. Welcome to the jungle. I think I oh. The oh, there it is. Eat it. Eat this too. I don't know if that actually hurts him. Like, Hold them off while I, reload. I could imagine you might get or force like a uh, damage by hitting them with a trash can. Wait. Yeah. Do maintain that this is a very good looking game like source engine or no whatever I, I do think this is a very good looking game primarily because the attention to detail with the lighting lighting far more important than texture work the light lighting and stylization very important if you want a game to look good for longer so this game's gonna look better than half-life 2 for a very long time but then it's like i saw half-life alex and it's like oh gosh this is what valve's capable of doing they just don't of course we already kind of knew that with portal 2 portal 2 has one of the most of impressive looking openings i've ever seen in a game because again i think you could just they just record mass physics interactions like an animation and then just play it out you're gonna shoot yeah i might want to turn around a hambo i'm about to be the owner of a brand new glock 18 17 yep also in this game after you kill them they bleed after you kill them they bleed after you kill them, they bleed. Never mind. After you kill them, they bleed. Oh. Ignore me. I'm gonna go over here and... Uh, at least show the Easter egg. But there's an achievement for carrying this hat all the way to the end of the game like through the entire game i can barely get through this freaking thing without the hat you think i'm gonna be ah we have an i also got a new phone I repeat, we have a code red yep hey george uh new stream yeah and i just kind of felt like playing half-life but spe i specifically felt like playing black mesa my preferred half-life even if it's not well I, I keep switching between saying it's my preferred or it's my favorite because both are kind of true i love half-life one but brutal half-life is probably the most one of the most satisfying first person shooters i have ever played i absolutely love everything about it and it proves the the value of an old engine on new hardware. Ah. Ah. Uh, uh, you might want to look behind it. Or not. Okay. Good night. Hello! And I hate it when people interrupt my head smashing session too, but <laughs> at least handle it with some dignity. And this girl is on fire! 
That was a bit of a glitch there for a minute. All right. Love the fact that they added the blue screen of death to this scene because there's a bit later on where they have, you know, a dark room with nothing else in it except for this really bright blue screen. It's one of my favorite pieces of scenery in the entire game. <laughs> no, I've not... I, I have every intention of, at some point at least trying hunt down the freeman i it's like i don't want to pay for it but i also don't believe in piracy so i don't know how i would ever do it but everybody talks about how butt awful that is and everybody sort of you know there's got to be something good to be said about it because I am a firm believer that there is no absolute, absolute uh, good or absolute evil when it comes to, or not absolute good and evil, that's something else. Um, no game is 100% awful, and no, there's no, there's no game or movie or book or anything that is completely devoid of good. Like, there's got to be something good about hunt down the freeman and i want to be the one guy to say that ah, okay this one part was good or something like that but i also don't want to play it because it is shit awful <laughs> it's this weird thing it's like i want to try it for the heck of it but i also don't want to pay for it loud all right Why am I not able to select my freaking crowbar? That's stupid. Like, did it fast? Oh, fast weapon switch on. Yes, thank you. What? That's just stupid. What? Okay, there we go. Now we're back to where we need to do. <laughs> Nothing is 100%. Nothing's 100% bad. Hold my game. Yeah. Of course, in my case, I could say that literally. I've, I've gone back and tried some old RPG Maker projects that I did. And I'm just like, how did I ever think this was good? It's like, oh, go to this precise coordinate to pick up a strawberry and deliver it to the farmer, but the coordinates are in the middle of a realistically large uh, farm field with zero landmarks on a two-dimensional plane. It's like, yeah, yeah, Dave, this was this was totally a learning experience, and now you just buying the farm. Talking of which, how how much protein did you not eat? to get killed by having a very small stepladder falling on your head. Oh, you finally played Half-Life 2. That is groovy. It's a very, that's a... It's one of those games where you gotta you got play it at least once. Like, it's, it's great. Now, I remember you saying that you were, you were, uh, in the process of getting to play it so i mean it's uh good you finally got to now they've changed this puzzle or not it's not really a puzzle but they've changed this part of the game around a few times throughout the updates oh what do you know the head crab is also has the hit detection of a drunken never mind i found his brother his brother who wasn't blind yet particular parts always annoying well I say that uh, there's oh there's I don't have anything interesting to say so I'm just gonna stop talking about that and move on to something else weaponry
All righty. Yeah, well, come on, boy. Well, you better be. Dude, what's kind of funny to me is uh, I'm so used to brutal Half-Life where I have to no-clip through this door because you just can't. It's like, holy crap, the AI works. Oh, I hate valve puzzles. Probably the only good joke in Duke Nukem Forever. There's no safe zone in New Mexico. Anyway, thanks for the help. Well, ain't you a smart cookie? I'll clip you. <laughs> uh, favorite chapter in Half-Life 2. I don't actually know what that would be. It's, it's really weird. I can name a very specific favorite chapter in this game. And that would be Questionable Ethics. Now... Not for the gameplay, because Questionable Ethics actually has a number of really annoying gameplay segments, but there's a handful of spots in this game that I think are just phenomenal in terms of both visuals. Well, it, it, it reminds me of a lot of my favorite stuff. Yeah, I do it. But, uh... Half Life 2. What the? Bastard. But it'd be very difficult for me to figure out what my favorite chapter of 2 would be. Actually, okay. I think I have something of an answer for that. I really like Anti Citizen 1. But the problem is, it's, uh,. Also, home to just kind of a lot of annoying stuff. Because Anti Citizen 1, I think, just embodies what I think Valve was capable of doing. And what this game demonstrates, in fact, even original Half Life 1, as a, well, as old as it is and as bad as it looks by today's standards, there really is a. a there, 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 there is a real sense of escalation in Half-Life games because in, half in both two and one, you're so used to the way that environments look, and like every even in the even in the midst of chaos or whatever, everything looks fairly normal. Then you get to these points like Anti-Citizen 1, and in this case, uh, I don't think it's surface tension, but the bit like, uh, oh, screw that ladder. Here, eat that. But what I was talking about escalation is they make it so when the a when there is a huge invasion and like a basically a small scale war going on it really does feel like that like by the by certain points in both this and half-life 2 you properly understand like you feel like there's a whole war going on and whatever so i get it's so Favorite chapter of Half-Life 2 would probably be Anti-Citizen 1. Not for the content itself, but the just because of that escalation. Like, you come out into City 17 to see it completely destroyed, and it becomes urban warfare. And I really like urban warfare in games for shooters. Imagine if a barnacle ate another barnacle. Well, you'd have like this really, b uh, even better. If two barnacles were trying to eat the same barrel or something, it'd be like this Lady in the Tramp moment, which 
I wonder if that's how new barnacles are made. I can't remember if that opens up or not. They've changed... They, throughout the updates, they make subtle changes. Or they have made subtle changes to this game, so... Oh. So sometimes there's secret areas that are moved or rearranged. Other times... Oh. Some areas are moved or rearranged, and others are just... I can't think of any missing things. Oh, there it is. But there's been there's a couple changes that I actually kind of don't like. There's one in particular later on that I think is absolute dumpster. Okay. You want to know the easiest way to get down this elevator without getting your face eaten off by head crabs? Walk back and forth or sprint back and forth so they can just jump off. Some of them are a little smarter than that, so you may be a little bit up the creek, but they'll all just jump at you, causing them to just go over that railing there. Because they're stupid. Oh, oh my. Here they come, they are seen Niemann. Ow. Got at least... Well, what was that? And then there's a little security checkpoint platform with some stuff. I want to go here. There's a little hidden area for you. I mean, it's about as hidden as my butt cheek, but there we go. <laughs> you do get a suit recharge station. <sighs> nifty. Double nifty. Now, once you have accomplished getting to this area, you will find that it becomes a shooting gallery for idiots. Now my brain also said that there used used to be like an electric pool or something. Maybe that was the original Half-Life. Now, question. Can you cook grenades in this game or is that something that's just with the gold source? My brain says I could get them to all just jump in that water there, so we're gonna do that. Ah, my ankles. Come get some Gordon pizza. You know, I'd swear one of them landed on that box and then bit me. Come and get it, dum dum. Wee. <laughs> Half Life is one of those shooters where, if you can think of an alternate solution, the game probably facilitates it. <laughs> oh. Okay. It's mono e mono. Tasty. I don't need that health. So. Yeah. Half-Life is a game of rules. Everything lives and dies under certain circumstances. Sweet Mary. Everything lives and dies under specific circumstances. Meaning. You can have things like. Eh, I'm not even going to fire a bullet. You could get through basically this entire opening bit without ever firing a shot. I think the only time you have to start shooting is uh, we've got hostiles. And even then, that's a questionable one. You could just run up on the Marines and just go bonk. Gonna go this way. Not that it matters. I don't think there's actually any benefit to exiting early. 
except for the fact that there was probably like a uh don't know if there was anything else there because i never bothered to check and now it's time to play sniper and by that i mean try to blow up everything at once Now imagine if the, the giblets could hurt you. I'm pretty sure I'd have died at least once from getting smacked in the face by bull squid. That's some bull squid. It's, it's just physics and explosives. It describe half-life in three words. Physics and explosives. Describe half-life two in three words. Uh, too many vehicles. <gasps> okay. Ah, I was about to... I thought that, that was the platforming section. Where is it? Hey, it's coming up on me. Oh, no! It's a thingy that I could just shoot twice and it's dead. I like the health pack there. Like, well, we know we're being a bit of a dingus with the head crab just spawning in on there, so we're gonna give you a health pack. But we also know you're probably gonna break your ankles doing this part, so... Yeah. And they did a lot of stuff like this in this game. Just, here's a room. We put some detail in that room. You can't go in there, so don't even bother. All right. We're going to do this the Dave way. Uh, with the expected results. Okay. Whoop. Bada bing. Bada bizzle. Bada ding. Rain and drizzle. Cupcake. Cookie. Honey bunches of damn it! Oh, nifty. There's a checkpoint there. Okay. Bodex! I like that there's a death screen there just because uh, Source Engine, or at least Gold Source made it, so if you just even landed in a small body of water, eh, all damage is negated. What if you had an eye emergency? Dude, I have cataracts. You don't want to talk about eyes. That's a weird thing with me. Like, despite the fact that I am a reasonably healthy individual, I say reasonably, at least by American standards, I have cataracts, I broke a rib, like, uh, that, that's something that happened between Half-Life 2 and now, is I broke a rib trying to skateboard. Because <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> okay. Have fun, bitch. Oh. Boy, did that not work out the way I was hoping. Unlike Half-Life 2, the pistol in Half-Life 1 does actually have an alternate fire. Because, uh, the primary fire is that speed, which is more or less pinpoint accurate. And then it has an alternate fire, which adds like 20 to 25% more damage at the cost of most of your accuracy. So that does actually come into play when you're... I, I do actually quite like that. It makes sense to me. It's one of the reasons why I quite like this particular version of Half-Life. Did you find out why the Camaro started smoking? Not a clue. If I had to guess, uh, it's... I mean, I'm taking a guess from playing a lot of Beam NG. Um, if I had to guess, his, the something like the piston rings 
or something to do with the injection assembly probably what was starting to go out on it so when you see white smoke that or like bluish white smoke like that sort of thing that means i believe that means oil is being burnt or the uh the mixture of some because uh, i know black smoke is a lot of oil being burnt but that's that typically happens more with carbureted engines so if i had to guess that dude was racing the engine and just starting to wear out like his piston rings or something Because if you over rev an engine for long enough, things start to fail, and that sort of happens. Now, granted, again, that's from playing a game like BeamNG, which actually simulates that sort of thing. So, oh, have a bone. What? There's no soda. That's like my favorite thing about Half Life 1, is you could just. Refill your health by being patient. Everybody's heading for the surface, but I think they're crazy. So am I. We stay put. Someone is bound to come and rescue us. What kind of Terminator badass are you? Uh -huh. Oh, you're scared of that, but you're not scared of the fellow scientists who just put a bullet in your weenie. We just found the protagonist of a totally different story because no reasonable man should have survived either one of those things. We found the protagonist of Half-Life 3, the scientist from Black Mesa. <laughs> you know, the scientist from Black Mesa that wasn't Gordon Freeman. Boo! Dallas SWAT! There's a lot of little changes Like, oh Some of my favorite storytelling in any game Is just radio broadcast Because it's totally optional You can, you can stick around and listen Or You can uh, just continue It's not a cutscene It's an option You don't say. Nifty! We've got assistance from the military. We're all totally going to be safe. What? I'm sorry. Did I invite any of you to my tea party? What? Oi. I remember there being head crab zombies here, so why is it just a bunch of head crabs? Man, I cannot remember. Half -Life, the original Half-Life 1, you would get a shotgun here. But then it was they changed it to a magnum. I think, but recently, I think they changed it back to a shotgun. Or maybe it was the other way around. Maybe it was the Magnum, then it was a shotgun. That this is weird. I wish I could roll back the updates on this game. There's a couple differences I actually prefer from older versions. I know you're gonna come through that ceiling. I know there's a head crab in here. Maybe it's after you pick it up. Oh, weapon pickup animations. Ah, there it is. Ha! Have a thought. Uh, oh, they told you they bleed. Uh, across the grates. Uh, okay, so it's not a perfect game. No such thing as perfection. 
Come with me, and you'll be soon enough dead from a laceration. Yeah, do it. Do it. <sighs> I'm supposed to push that box, but since I'm like the greatest, I can do it without it. One change they made from previous versions is things like actually having marked boxes. So you don't have to sit there and go, Oh, hello, Steve. Oh, Steve's friends. Bo and Billy. Yeah, so that was probably a waste of a couple shotgun shots, but <laughs> I don't need them. I don't need them yet. And uh, usually you get your ammo back. Uh, for a Glock, apparently. All right, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Well, Doc, got any ideas? Yeah, kick the door down. Oh. You know, I would shoot every damn lock in this place if I knew they wouldn't just take it out of my pay. Oh, is that what your explanation is? And not Crowbar Collective didn't want to program it. Oh, well, we'll get that door open anyway. Did he seriously? Was that the head crab from before that jumped through the window? Now, in OG Half-Life 1, you could turn off the electrical current. This one, eh, you got to deal with it. That's fine. It's actually a little bit more easy to navigate. Balls, 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 balls. See, I was thinking about streaming Brutal Half-Life, but the problem with that is it's been a while since I've played it. And it also has the problem of crashing very reliably in a few spots. So, on the one hand... I know what to expect. On the other hand, I have to restart my computer immediately afterward because the mouse acceleration, th there's like this negative mouse acceleration that applies to your whole computer once Brutal Half-Life crashes. So I just don't want to have to restart my PC right now because it takes like 20 minutes. Why? Maintenance personnel only. Are you maintenance or are you like, well, you're, I know you're security, but. Uh, I think that door opens. I do want to have him with me. You know. An extra ass to kick. I, what? What the? I stood up and when I crouched back down, there was a head crab. Oh, this part. This part's hilarious. But if you wait for the head crabs, you can keep the turret occupied just long enough to disable it. I think. I... I don't know what a turret's priorities are, but we're gonna do it this way. You... Ah! I caught a new phone. A lot louder than my old one. <laughs> cool. I'll deal with the rest of the head grabs. Oh, I think you get a shotgun. I was about to say shotgun bullets. And if I had said bullets, I would just have to slap my, my own butt. Because that's... They're shells, not bullets. Although a slug is technically a bullet. Wait a minute. That door goes way beyond this place. Oi! Yeah, we might live longer if we work together. You just stand in there looking like an idiot. Like I wonder if my friend's coming back. Yes, Barney, your friend is coming back. Cause I don't know how to leave people. I have attachment issues. Oh, what's the stench? I farted. Sure, fart jokes are not funny, but huh. just being honest. Uh oh, 
Well, that's on the ground now. Okay. I think this guy used to spawn with a magnum. And I would kill him and steal it. <laughs> or maybe that was Brutal Half-Life. See, now I'm thinking about Brutal Half-Life. Which, oh! After we play this for a little bit, I might actually re-download Half-Life 1 and get Brutal Half-Life working again. Just to kind of show it. And I might even try uh, version 2.0 again, because that was a, a real problem. Because the uh, version, version not point one of uh, Brutal Half-Life, you could actually play, but I think there was an issue with like version not point two that was like prevented it from even being completable, which is garbage. Are the other hands moving? No, because they couldn't bother to animate it. No idea what you're doing. Well, I do, so don't worry about it. Oh, this is the Vortigaunt runch, runch, rush. And by that, I mean, go, go, go. Balls, 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 balls. They have an AOE attack now. That went a lot better than usual. See, this place was actually kind of well put together when we walked into the room. Now it's kind of falling apart and there's dead things. Okay, everybody alive? Where's the other one? Where's the other guy? More importantly, is was he the new guy or? Ah. Actually, I don't remember was well, I was asking myself the same question. Were you was was the original guy the one with the helmet or um that that dude? Oh well. Not like it matters. Uh oh, this is awkward. I I mean, um um I I I, I, I uh, uh I mean, you know, I think I think he knew it was about to happen anyway. So, Blue screen of death. Ah, death that. My only issue with Office Complex, at least in Black Mesa, is a lot of times I end up missing something like that because I can never remember. Bollocks. Because I can never remember where I've been. Really? Why is there a head crab everywhere? I like cockroaches. Oh, without the cock. <laughs> uh, penis joke. Here's a really weird thing that I noticed. Um, I might be misremembering, but... Nightmare House 2. <laughs> that, that mod that everybody was playing... Uh, back on YouTube in like 2011, thereabouts. Good grief. How many freaking loading screens am I going to walk through on accident? But the vents in that, I think the tech is because you only crawled through a vent like once. They didn't have bump mapping. So the shadows that are casting from like the triangles were painted on. Because you would only travel through them one way. This, um, which was made by... Probably more experienced devs. Oh, I'm not going to say less talented because Nightmare House 2 is actually pretty good from what I remember. Actually does have proper bump mapping or specular light, whatever the term would be. I'm not, I'm not particularly good with that. Bump mapping is like that, like this little small shadows being cast from the flashlight stuff. And it's a lot easier to render than dynamic shadows. What we just did was turn off a ceiling turret, by the way. Oh, goody. I swear I shot two head crabs with one bullet, but this game doesn't have bullet penetration because it's not Counter-Strike. 
I do wonder how difficult it is to program bullet penetration rules and physics. Because I don't see why games don't, or more shooters. I don't see why shooters, most shooters just don't seem to have it. Because if you shoot an enemy with a rifle bullet, your brain, as well as your logic, are going to say, Oh no, I forgot about that. It's not very effective. It was very effective. That would have been effective. Boy, am I bad with a shotgun. I don't know where I got the ammo, but there we go. How did I forget about those Vortigaunts? I have never taken damage from those Vortigaunts ever since I played the game for the first time. Ah. Here's a uh, not so fun fact that's actually quite boring. I didn't know this vent was here for probably most of my playthroughs of either this or the original Half-Life 1. I don't believe Half Life 1 had that vent. Like this extra room. Gosh. That. Nothing. And crawling through these vents kind of makes me want to play Mirror's Edge again. I don't know why. I, do. I need to play some new games. Like freaking Resident Evil Village. I really want to play Village because I hear, you know, second game in a bollocks. I hear second game in a uh, newly established era of survival horror. I'm not going to say new series, obviously, because Resident Evil is a very old series. So, but a new era, because in the case of like uh, Fatal Frame 2, it was uh, the first it was a new era of survival horror for that generation. And now we're finally getting some AAA survival horror games again, and they're pretty good. A village, it's like, it, it hits all the similar notes. It's got like weird cultish families, and it's in a village, and you're like looking for someone. It's like it, it, trends and ideas you see are cyclical. All right, we're just going to save ourselves the trouble here. Again, that failed. That didn't. <laughs> Tube's not receiving enough video. What? Hang on. I'm pretty sure that's a YouTube problem because I've got, like, I've got full bars. May need to restart the stream. I don't even have any drop frames. What is this thing all about? Oh well. Sorry, probably gonna just gonna have to continue like this till YouTube gets its stuff sorted out. Because it doesn't seem to be buffering on my end. Of course, that's always a weak excuse. It's like, well, it's okay on my end. Your troops are coming in to save us. Yeah, save us. Save us in the same way I'm going to save you. You with your non-existent pistol. Oh, I've been throwing grenades when I needed to have those grenades. Okay, we're going to run in here. We're going to get everybody at the party. i just throw that down there. Oh! That is how we do it in the hood. Uh-oh.
That, that was... Do not throw your garbage at me, sir, or I'll have to put you in timeout. And by timeout, I mean the graveyard. Munching on that arm there, buddy. Does it taste good? Does it taste like mama's barbecue? There was a... I, I think it was the, the recordings that I did once. There was like... a. Blew up the head crabs, and you could kind of see an example like that there. But it was like a broken window. There was a head crab over here, and then just a blood splat on the wall. So you could actually trace the source of the physics and stuff like that. It's, I love physics engines. But Half-Life 2 was really the first and only to fully utilize it. To my memory. I mean, I'm not going to say that games don't use physics. Just... Half-Life 2 had, like, the best physics. They weren't the most accurate, but they were most definitely the most satisfying. It's just gravity gun. Ah, freaking ding-dong. I hate this freezer. Like, I legit hate this freezer. And not just for the health violations, either. I'm totally turning a doorknob. But this freezer gets more annoying with every incarnation of Half-Life, with every update of this game. I hate this place. Because I always get lost. I always have to... Find out where the freaking fannies I'm going. I mean, oh yeah, this is obvious, but wait until later when it's like, oh, you have to go on the specific path to this specific place to do this specific thing. Eat my feet, Valve. How about that? Okay, I'm going to put that down there. Or later. In this game, I I remember they changed the music. Had a different composer on earlier for like the original mod, free mod, and I actually kind of liked some of the music better in the older versions of the mod. The bull squid. Okay, I thought there was a bull squid, but there, it went from uh, bull squid to bullshit real fast. Oh, there he is. Give him both barrels. More kissing head crabs. Because here's the funny thing about head crabs. Uh, they're hard to hit with a crowbar. They're everywhere. They're hard to see. And here, the flashlight's on. Like... Nearest makes no difference. Yeah, I knew I heard one. But fortunately, I've seemed to have solved the the puzzle of where to go next rather soon. Because I know where to go, which is just really freaking annoying. Also, I kind of hate the fact that the lighting doesn't really work on this quite as well. I tell a lie. They added some visual indications, I think. Yeah, I'd say that was pretty accurate. They actually improved on one of the stupider puzzles. I'm talking of stupid, now I have to figure out how to get there. Then again, I think I was drunk last time I played this, so that may have been one of the issues I was having with navigating this place. He says, now at the very beginning of the freaking freezer, and now I have no idea where to go. Oh, gee. I don't want... That health pack 
honestly doesn't matter at this point. Like, what am I going to do? Just get two health. There's nothing in this game that's going to take, you know, just two health. Not going to save me from anything. Okay. I think I remember this being the point where it drops down. There's a head crab. Yep. Oh, suit battery. That I do need. Or want. I don't need suit battery. I can beat this game at home over the head. Alright, I'm definitely probably gonna have to restart the stream at this point. See, here's the thing. If you did do that purple hat thing, carry it all the way, you could use it to activate barnacles this is just stupid oh that's right they added that fence to the middle of this area which is just a really pointless thing because it turned a turned it put a horseshoe design in an area that was once just like a full cycle how, i can't remember how many shots it took to kill uh barnacles in half-life 2 was it just was it just was it four or five I can't remember. Maybe it was six. I can't remember. It's weird how a crowbar is stronger than a pistol in this game, though. I mean, it makes sense from a balancing standpoint. Like, if you're in close range, it does more damage for the sake of making it a viable weapon. And here's the thing. It's two different kinds of damage, but equally deadly. How about that valve? Okay. Oh, he has a Glock. I was really hoping he had a Magnum. And that's a shortcut back to the cafeteria. Because we're groovy. Apologize to this! Uh Probably a good thing he wasn't there, because I was thinking about just blowing his head off. Okay. Oh, hey, wait. Ain't nobody hitting that thing. Okay, I'm gonna see what it says now. Higher than the recommended bit rate. Well, eat my feet. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna bit rate like I feel like it. That's iTunes. That's Firefox. That's Black Mesa. Okay. And now that's in the way. Why? Why did that glitch out? Why is no one ready? What? My computer has completely lost its mind. It's the G-Man! Because he always hits the spot. That is a bit more mysterious than in the OG Half-Life 1. So here's my strategy. I'm going to run in, activate all of the enemies. Then I'm going to stand back and wait for this freaky deek to uh, take care of them all. Or die. Because he has infinite ammo. I have virtually unlimited... Uh, not virtually, but I basically have unlimited ammo when you consider the fact that the pistol is so freaking common. And apparently all the enemies took their stupid pills when they uh, knew they were going to be fighting him. So the problem has basically been solved without firing a shot. Because Half-Life. Oh, for... The price of a head crab is apparently health. Dude! Hello! Frickin' Annie Oakley over here. What? Where's the scientist? Uh. I don't think that was scientist friend. Oi. They may have been. Uh. I mean, I don't think his head would have gone... As, you know, there's a guy over here that's kind of the same way. Whatever. 
Hamburger. All right. Uh, I have to. I finna dookie. I'm just gonna put it that way. So we go. We we go. Uh, do this. We gonna brb, and I'll brb shortly. I hope I wasn't away for too long. I don't know how long that took, but okay. Whew. I feel better. I hope you do too.
now this place did used to house like a lot of grenades and stuff but apparently it's just like one i'm gonna stick around here and gather up some supplies then i'll try making my way up okay now usually a scientist friend makes it all the way here i legitimately don't know what happened to him he just got yeeted into the shadow verse <sighs> but a scientist friend usually makes it there and they have a little conversation Uh, no. I have no intention of helping. <laughs> and that sci uh, that security card was then was like, Oh, I just assisted the bad guy. Now he has to live the last of, rest of his short, miserable life knowing he helped Gordon Freeman. Oh look, a functional elevator. Uh. Uh, we've got hostels okay that's the end of the chapter I probably should have completed that also there's dynamic lights for the lights the there's shadows and stuff. It's awesome. Crap. This part's annoying for a number of reasons. Dude! Primarily because I don't want to wake up the turret. 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 I think you can carry 64 shotgun rounds i can't it's one of those weird things shotguns in video games either have way too much ammo not enough ammo or if you're doom 2016 you seem to always have the amount of ammo that you want so i suppose perfectly balanced interesting actually if i remember correctly hide over here nothing bad could possibly happen well what happened there well obviously something exploded oh it actually worked come on oh Get another one. Okay, the head crabs in this are like really annoying. Oh, this is the fun part where Vortigaan spawn in and completely ruin your couch. Oh, phone's going off. Shut up. Yeah, I thought there was another one would show up. They seem to like to keep their distance, which is nice. Ow. Two shots per enemy. So instead of carrying 64 shots, it should have just been 32, but every shot is twice as powerful. At least that's what makes sense to me. And I remember things spawning in here. I mean, that was just an unwinnable war there. Guy with a shotgun surrounded by explosive barrels. Oh.
Cut. Ay! Um. You don't say. Now, apparently you could reprogram these turrets. Or maybe that was Half-Life 2. I can't remember. One of these games had an achievement. It's like, reprogram turrets. And then do that a few times. We seal the trouble. Just leave the troubles behind. What's up? Why does every human in this particular remake look like they have monkey face anyway okay man i just i guess i'm crouching under this then <laughs> hey come over the water's fine you prick I think it was uh, OG Half-Life 1 where the those particular that particular tripwire bomb was like affected by boxes and stuff. Thank God you're here. No friends in Black Mesa. <laughs> How about them apples? And now we get the fun gun. Or one of them. We get some new toys. And one one thing that I really don't use that often in, in Black Mesa or Half-Life in general is the freaking rifle grenades. I just, for whatever reason, I don't really haven't really properly learned where all the like the placements are for like extras and extra ammo and stuff like that so just sort of don't use them because I don't want to waste them this is a hell of a first fight to have because the lighting's not exceptionally great pain peko Kind of hoping I could throw that in the air and then just shoot it, knowing that it would probably end well. Or poorly, as the case may be. Ah, how about that? Wait, okay. Stop. Well, stop it. Stop it. Okay. It's not particularly convenient game design if we have to wait for it to stop shutting. Okay, what do we got? Ammunition. Plenty of health. In case you're not me and actually suck at this game. He says, knowing full well that he's going to absolutely low chunks later on especially with the zen levels because i've not played black mesa enough to be good at the zen levels we're gonna go this way i always go this way but i don't I don't think I actually have a very good explanation as to why I always go over here. Like at this point, it's just like, uh, when I play Half-Life, I go this way. Whew. I'm only gonna play for a little while longer because I can already, I can feel myself just be like, getting to the point of where it's not even worth going. Like, I'm not saying anything worth a is. I'm not saying anything worth it, Johnny. Okay. 
Of course, I never say anything worth it, Johnny, so who cares? Trying to get rid of the uh, turrets. Oh! Oh, Lord. That went the opposite of well. <laughs> but I'm gonna live with it. I'm gonna live with that mistake. What doesn't kill you makes you stranger. Oh, this is making me a sitting duck. Hit me. I dare you. Where's that coming from? Oh, I might. Oh, that's an explosive crate. Not a big fan of being near that. Want that. And they throw a lot more grenades in this than they ever did. Seriously, they throw a lot more grenades. Oh! Okay. If I was smart, I would backtrack far enough and get plenty of health refilled. And actually... Since that's an option, let's go back and get health. Because that's, uh, that would certainly help my chances. And then as soon as we're done with this little encounter, we will, uh, end the session. That's why I saved it. I can't trust myself to not just do something. All sack. Okay. I think the orig original Half-Life 1 had like a small glitch where the uh like you could stand on the trip mines and some people found that was a really good way to bypass certain parts of the game and guess what y'all coming to me Cause they gotta be close enough to throw a frag. I forgot, Half-Life 1 has a shotgun on three and not four. Oh, 
I'll have to come back and ah. I could have sworn that was him. Oh, there is a guy there. you can sort of screw up the first time but then end up doing it really well the second time but it's not like I'm doing splendastically or anything so okay. I think that's pretty much all the health I can bleed out of this Ugh. okay now, am I full up on ammo anything need reloading I don't want to run into that problem. Nope. Oh, something. Okay. Nifty. Go just a little bit longer, and then I'll either need to take a break or just do something else entirely. First. Yeah. Okay, this one's a bit of a... Oh, where did that go? Oh, just eat it. What the? We're doing this the stupid way. And that's pretty much the end of the stupid way. to have company oh we just blew his own dude up it always amazes me when i watch high level play as it's called of stuff like half-life where you get people who just like change weapons all the time and all this other stuff it's like i'm sorry i'm just i'm not that good I'm gonna eat your toes! Oh, there are no toes to eat. I'm not Corona except instead of Ow! I want it! Okay, where did he come from? I always have more issues with this part of the game than I do most other parts. That's the embarrassing thing. Like, I actually, like, really suck it at We've Got Hostiles. Because, I mean, the AI is pretty ruthless in this game, so... Having a bunch of them... That's a health pack. I mean, this, this sort of taking cover, slow, tactic-y thing this is not really Half-Life, in it? It's supposed to be moving fast and dump, du ducking and dodging and weaving. That's just not something that happens all the time, unfortunately. Unless you know where the suit battery is, which I do, but I just wasn't getting it. Uh, boy. I know there's going to be more guys over here we're gonna use my classically trained really crappy hand grenade throwing skills to get through this part of the game gonna take all of my training he says this, there's absolutely nobody around okay nifty so Should I continue or should I call it a day? That's the that's the question of the week. 
Come on. Gate off. Need to stand on the bollard. Good grief. I'm gonna break that thing open at some point. I have to lick the juice off the ground like Ozzy Osbourne. Alrighty. So, we're in as good of a place as any to go into this scramble. Unfortunately, I will say this. Uh, the most recent update made a moderate improvement to this hangar fight. In that it's uh, actually possible to get through it without just getting too much damage done to you. But, in the in the sense that they they also made it more linear so whereas half-life one it was a short sprint but an open environment this used to be a really wide open environment and that's just not black mesa is not good with wide open environments so a lot of the changes they made for this sort of definitive edition release was kind of tightening everything up and also you can't get shot out when you first leave the elevator that in and of itself is a good thing This is a lot more complex. So let's go. There's an attack helicopter, so prepare to, you know, have your butt kicked in. Uh! Also, I don't remember it being so difficult to find where you're supposed to go. Oh, that's it. Well, hot diggity dang. Oh, hey, where's my supplies? Okay. Well, I'm stuck on a piece of... Great. Yee! Talk about stuff I hate about Half-Life. This bit right here. I hate those guys. And I think more come rappelling down if you take too long. So in the uh, interest of not having to fight freaking paratroopers again or paracorp para para ding dong. Don't continue. Hey, we went from having like 150 bullets to only 75. Had to do some uh, second grade math in my head there for a minute. I'm a writer, not a mather. Disclaimer, I've not written any published work, so I guess I'm not a writer at all. Oh, there's one right there! Yeah. This is just one of those head crab closets. What the... Oh, son of a freaking monkey on a tree made of cheese. But it's that really fake cheese that you buy from Walmart on a bad day. Because all you want is cheese. You don't care about the quality. What am I talking about? No bullets needed. Finally, an easy enemy. <sighs> it's kind of funny. Half-Life, despite being like one of the most celebrated shooters ever has some of the most uh, overused and generic enemy types. You have zombies, soldiers, uh, laser things, and like head crabs in and of themselves are such a trope.
The soldiers, at least in this, have at least something of a personality, something of a conscience. Sounds about right. Judging by your hesitancy, I'd say you were part of what went wrong. <laughs> oh, I am what went wrong. Now look, if anyone can end this catastrophe, it's the science team and the Lambda complex at the opposite. I'm the only other I'm the only thing Doom Guy would fear because I was born in hell. I brought it here. Doom Guy saves the world from hell. I'm the one who brought it here. Is the door open yet? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh. So long and thanks for all the fish. Is it technically a genocide run if I kill everything? Like, friends and enemies? Oh, it's time to play. Is it dynamic lighting or just... Painted, pre-baked lighting that made MGS2 look really gorgeous. We'll grab one of these traffic barrier thingies and try it. Yep, pre-baked. Pre-baked is nice. But you gotta make sure that people can't test it out too much. Otherwise, you'll get instances like me. Where I'm just like, this isn't real. This is all right. <laughs> My jokes don't make sense. Be sure to email me at www.toobad.org. That didn't even slightly work. Also, bull squids in Black Mesa are a bullshit because their attack is like far more widespread and powerful than any other incarnation of Half Life. There was a head crab zombie in here, but I ate it. And you get a shit ton of grenades, so. Not like I'm completely out of it. Wait up, what? Google Translate mod. No? Um. That sounds vaguely familiar, so I think it's highly likely that I. That's familiar. Here we use pre-baked lighting and dynamic lighting in the same spot because that makes sense. Half-Life Google Translate. Uh, let's see. My DB. Okay, so it just requires Half-Life 1. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I can, uh, I can play that at some point. I don't know about today, though. Try to keep that on my, on my, uh, my docket. My radar. Wait. I want to go to the ball! Why is that not open? Seems oddly suspicious, like... Could be oh, I have to go the long way. So I don't even think this is the correct way to go, but it's the way we are gonna go, so that's the correct way. Walking down Broadway is a one-way street, whichever way I go. Oh, I got a free friend. All right. A health pack for people who don't have enough health to survive the fall. What fall? This one. Which takes no damage, so never mind. Oh goody, it's the tram ride. Really expected there to be a, a head crab there. Or the first time the tram ride exists. Now this I think does actually have some 
dynamic shadows. Yes, it does. Yeah, it hasn't been already made very clear. I love dynamic lighting. I also like running over bull squids and hound eyes with a tram. GTA! Give him a few flesh wounds while I'm at it. Now, I don't actually like jumping the tram here. I like going this way. Fewer radiation sicknesses. And I believe that's something you could do in the original Half-Life as well. Like I said, I was, I'm kind of tempted to... My brain says you can go over there. But I've never tried. Oh no, we're gonna spend a few minutes doing this, aren't we? Okay. Save it. Brave it. My butt crack. Okay. I'm not gonna quick save. Get on the ladder, you stupid. So that's possible. You know, if you're not like a, not a freaking idiot. I. It's. Ugh, I really do not want to quick save. I think I could hard save and have two different files for this. This is possible. You can't tell me this is impossible because it's definitely possible. Ah. At least in some capacity. Maybe if I aim for the railing. Like instead of stopping short and attaching myself to the ladder, what if I just went for it? Oh, keep hitting. Or keep hitting escape for some reason. That's not quick load. Whereas if you're playing stalker, it might as well be quick load. Because <laughs> you gotta stop every few minutes and reload anyway. Okay. Oh, Lord. Okay, if I start here. One, two. Not quite. Because I think if you take damage, you can't jump for a minute anyway. So it's not like there's... What the shit? I do not want to... Do not want to quick save. Whoa. <laughs> that freaked me out there for a minute. Like, what the hell? I open with... Uh... That's where the tram ride is, so we could technically quick save and just deal with it later. Get on the... Oh. The ladder doesn't exist. I just no-clip through it. Man. Shut up. <laughs> Come on, my room's screaming at me. Meow. Meow. Man. Anyway, I had a visit from a cat. Okay. Let's just do this the old fashioned way. Uh. Is it okay, am I using the right? Thing? What? Never mind. <laughs> the ladder doesn't exist, and I'm not gonna no clip anyway. Oh hell no! I'm not wasting those two shotgun shells. I didn't need to get on the ladder anyway. Now I'm also confuzzled. I don't know where I'm going. A hole in the wall. Okay. Now let's go. Full squid. That's why I needed them two shells. I need these two. Oh. I thought there was one over there.
my brain says there's a good reason they give you suit battery, but then the rest of me is like, well, what? Oh, probably him. <gasps> hey! Dude. Oh. Seriously, I hate the literal splash damage from the freaking bull squids. a whole lot of nothing the i don't know what the differences are between source engine builds and stuff like that but it seems like ever since half-life 2 the source engine has been able to create or render far larger environments because half-life 2 did have some big environments but they were they didn't feel like they were massive like gigantic in scale this game i divine cybermancy uh dark messiah kind of did but not really i just really like the scale of things at least in comparison to og if lif it's time to use some shotgun ammo measured calculated and stupid it broke my box oh could have used that okay freaking explosive barrels just hiding over in the corner as they do okay oh we've got visitors We've got hostiles. They died in almost mirrored position. Hello. Why? Oh, that kind of fire. I thought it was like, oh, fire the rocket engine. Well, what'd he do to you? I've tried this like every single time. And it actually worked. Cool. I have skipped this freaking charge up machine every single time because every time I ride that barnacle, it always puts me in a worse spot. But what do you know? And now for more mass physics. Which again, I don't know if it's a saved animation file in the source engine or if my computer's just good enough to run it. And I say mass physics, not that many actually occurred. Well, there you go. There's an example of them putting in the effort to model something. Bending all the railings. Oh, yeah. I know what to do, but I figured I'd push the button anyway. What up? It's not going to hear much for very long once I fire this boomstick. I'm deaf as hell. Anyway. So the satchel charge doesn't really help too much. So here's my strategy. Run. Owie. Okay, well that didn't help. I can never remember... Oh. Ain't screwing around today. So I can never remember the buttons for the satchel charges. Rather embarrassingly. I always just use grenades. Okay. The grenade might kill him before I do. Or before it does. Because what I try to do here is blow up the doors. Primarily because I hate their music. LOL! <laughs> Okay, and then you can just drop down there and get to the lower level anyway, so it's not like doing all that rigmarole is particularly necessary anyway. I will save that charge station in case we need it. Okay.
Tell you what, we'll finish Blast Pit and then I'll have to quit for the day. I'm starting to get really tired. Like, here's the thing. I'm not very good at the whole entertaining thing, so I just try to be, you know, relatively chill. Like, you watch this because maybe you're, you just want some noise in the background, that kind of thing. Let's see how well the traffic thing does. Not very well, it died. So we'll go to the one that has water. Because uh, there, there was one YouTuber that I used to be kind of obsessed with because his commentary was was like the funniest thing ever like I, if i could say there's any one person i could i would want to meet it'd be him the problem was uh he's not he's not a popular one so what i'm about to say is is not an indictment of any one person but then he found out that he he was he uh did some really awful things it kind of came through the pipeline they were allegations, so there was no proof that he did awful things, but there was just the reality of him possibly faking his content came into play, and I guess I wasn't really ready to hear that. But I was obsessed with this guy for a long time. He introduced me to a lot of YouTube video, or not, yeah, a lot of games, things like uh, Fatal Frame. I had my all-time favorite horror game. There's a lot of stuff that it's still, and he helped me get through the worst year of my life. So, he was funny. Like, he was a genuinely hilarious person. And every once in a while, I think to myself, you know, since the th things that he did, and again, I, I'm not going to say who it was, and he was not a popular YouTuber by any stretch, so good luck guessing. Things that he did were never proven. And sometimes I think I want to go back and rewatch a lot of his older videos. Just because of a lot of nostalgia and it'd make me laugh again. And it might help me figure out how to do commentary. Because I do not watch Let's Plays anymore. I just don't. Like when I was in high school and such. Yeah, I watched Let's Plays because that's what you do. Like when you're you know, a certain age, you watch people play games. And then when you're older, you don't really watch people play games because when you come home from work, you would rather just play games. So I do need to study up on good commentary because like, uh, I don't know how familiar you might be with things like VTubers and that whole thing, but there's a lot of psychology that goes into why they're popular and it's a co it's a combination of them being genuinely good at being personable and having you know good personality but also they do have these funny moments and stuff and they play games and they they enjoy what they're doing and i've stated before that it's very difficult for me to have what many would consider fun like the the experience of playing a game to me is not enough to be excited what excites me is the dissertation the deliberation of ideas so it'll be like this game has these themes or this show has these themes or this this philosophy this psychology this this uh idea and execution and i I go into the nuts and bolts of things for fun. So the act of playing a game is very rarely fun to me. But when I have viewers and there's interactions or if I'm commentating alongside a friend or family member, like my sister, uh, then I have fun. When there's this shared experience of just kind of almost like disinterested pursuit of interest if that makes any sense i mean i'm rambling i'm not, i know i'm not making much sense but it's just playing this game to me is more comfortable it's one of the reasons why i always go back to half-life in a very weird way black life uh pff, ha black mesa i was getting that wrong in every way it's just this and half-life 2 are 
it, it, they're just comfortable games to me because they feel good to play. There's plenty of story. There's plenty of reasons to play them. A lot of things you can get from their design. It's their master classes and pacing and everything else. So, uh, it, there's a lot you can learn from a design perspective and environmental storytelling. So there's plenty that I could pick apart and say that this is here and this is here. Like earlier with the resonance cascade going on, there's that button that says like emergency shut off. And then there's a sticky note that just says re uh, needs repair immediately. That was not in the original Half-Life, but it just shows that observant players might see that. And yeah, I'm enjoying myself, George, uh, because you are watching. I, I always... I always get more talkative around people. Like if I'm no if I'm by myself and I know I'm by myself, huh, good luck getting me to say anything. I mean, I'll talk to myself, but I'm talking to myself about like uh, I'm basically acting out scenes that I'm writing in my head or interviewing myself about my own ideas to try to get a better grasp on what it is I'm working on in a very weird way sometimes i'm i don't really even understand what i'm working on I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm trying to figure out my core themes and stuff like i try whenever i write or create things i try to write and create things that would allow somebody else to think about it like overthink it like if i overthink this thing then whoever is watching or playing or however it is it would be served up then they too could overthink it. And they would get a lot more out of it. Not everybody's going to enjoy that sort of thing, but I make, I, I create things for myself and then everybody else can enjoy it. But streaming is very weird because in a weird way, I am doing this for me. I'm playing Half-Life right now or Black Mesa because I woke up today and felt like playing Black Mesa. No other reason. So even if my commentary is not particularly great the fact that i'm still playing the fact that i haven't ended the stream means that i have at least some bit of motivation there's a bit more motivation for me to continue who knows how i'll feel in five minutes who knows how i'll feel in an hour i could be here for the rest of the afternoon for all i know i could do a 10 hour stream and have a great time but it's unlikely I mean, all roads lead to Rome, they say, and my Rome is typically sleepy. Now, fun fact, with the original free mod, uh, there were like three times as many bull squids as any Half-Life mod ever. Like that moment right there, you would turn around and like two or three bull squids would just spawn in and there was like two over there and two over here. There are more bull squids in the original Black Mesa than you could shake a stick at. I wonder if I still have the original mod installed because I could load up some of these bits and it would just, it would be so different. And elevator stops and we walk out on a platform and I was going to just try to fall off. Stop. Okay. Hammer time. What up? Actually, it's Gordon. You need more hair. Okay. Every time! I always forget this is an airlock. I don't even want to go here. Yet. Unfortunately, there's no loading screen. I think Half-Life 1 had a loading screen here, so... A little less annoying. Oh! Pointless. Okay. That's why you go to the airlock. Because there's no reason to go the other way. <clears throat> Damn. Also, there, I think in Half-Life 1, there was a bull squid or something down there. Because why not? <laughs> and in Black Mesa, I think there was like 45 of them. What? Oh. Hello, Barnacle, my old friend. This is gonna hurt my legs. 
Oh yeah, hard mode activated. And I'm not talking about the difficulty. Oh. Okay. Uh. Also, the scientist in OG Half Life, he just stated up here. This is my secret hiding spot. How would it be? Maybe I should turn on the flashlight so I can actually see their freaking proboscises. This is my ah, he scared me. In open quotes. <laughs> okay. And here we have the wild bull squid in its unnatural habitat. It needs to be sedated for a medical checkup. But he got so nervous he started falling to pieces. Ooh. Oh sweet, we got freaking pistol ammo. If this was doom, we'd... Well. Uh, I think we need to get out of here. I think if you stick around there too long, it becomes impossible and then you die. You got like these things. Or maybe that was something else. This is why I, this is why I leave health recharge stations. Like if I have like 80% health, I'll leave a health recharge station if I know I'm gonna be doubling back. Because of poo poo like this. Oh, that's a more to go. Oh, shot in the back. That. Ooh. Me a bit of a dick. Oh, look, you grew some hair. How about a buckshot shampoo? I saw that hand twitching. You thinking about some lonely nights at the office. <laughs> Gordon Freeman, the only man to climb with the strength of his ass cheeks. <laughs> why did that... Why did that make me think I've seen something like that before? <laughs> I've seen some weird shit. Uh, ooh, health pack. Again... <laughs> Like, if you sort of know how to, like, where you're going in Half-Life, you can just outright bullcrap the, the health system. So I believe we've got everything turned on. Now we just got to return. Which ultimate... Oh, whoa! Dicer. Fortunately, help. Are you serious? Why is it the stupidest things that kill me? This is like the Goombas in Mario. It's like that you could, I, I could fight Bowser and take not one lick of damage, but you put me up against a Goomba and I'll die like 50 times. Like the weakest enemies in games are the ones you underestimate. Those are the ones that poop on your stoop. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Now we have the epic music because reasons. I did need that. Oh Lord, I went the wrong way. Also, oh, I do have a grenade equipped. I, was, I thought that was a pistol for some reason. Okay, go over there. Not over here. Okay, well, actually, just stay down there like a good tentacle. Good, good, Iranis. Okay. Whoop. What's up? I can't guarantee your safety, but I can guarantee this thing's gonna die. And now, for Sun Chefs. Dynamic lighting, I think. Anything I could pick up? Yeah, it's dynamic. Cool. Ah, oh, we missed it. Oh well. <laughs> uh, 
I like the fact that kind of gritty games like this and and like Doom uses uh, distortion to emphasize how loud something is. I like distorted sounds, and I even like in uh, Doom 2016. I've never played Doom. I've, well, I have not played Doom Eternal yet. But um, I love in that game where, like, when you change weapon mods and stuff like that, it, it makes these really crunchy noises. Like, in place of metallic clicking like you get with actual guns, uh, you it makes, like, crunchy noises. Now, something that they did with the definitive edition of Black Mesa, which this is, is putting the Magnum back in its original spot. Because uh, so many other versions of this did have the Magnum... I think it had Magnum ammo here. But you would pick up the Magnum at that one spot that I was talking about where now you get the shotgun like you do in uh, original half -Life. Unfortunately, they still have the slightly excessive amount of health here. I don't remember there really being many instances when I needed that much health, but I guess it's good. This is kind of a reset point at the end of, near the end of a particular chapter. So why not? And I also keep thinking the shotgun is on the four key because of Half-Life. I don't think there's any reason to go over there. Now there's a... There's one thing. Uh, I guess kind of a question to the one person watching. That would be you, George. And that is... Um, it would be a very slow-paced thing, but... And I've talked about it before, I don't know if you were here or not, but there is another Source Engine game called I Divine Cybermancy, developed by Strumon Studios, who did Space Wing Death Hulk, and more recently, that one Warhammer game, I can't think of what it's called. It was released this month, I think. It was this weird thing, but they're French developers, but I Divine Cybermancy is a, it's a, really cool game that has more ideas than they knew what to do with so it's kind of broken but it's a very slow paced rpg and i suck at it and i don't know that much about it other than the, the hours that i've put into it. it it's a weird game and i would like to try it and i think streaming it would allow me to you know kind of chill out and play it i have to worry too much it would be much the same like this but the problem is, if you take away my knowledge of a game, like if I'm unfamiliar with a game, and I'm ultimately very unfamiliar with I, um, the issues with my commentary lie to the fact that I'm very bad at reacting. I'm not a very reactionary speaker. So things like, uh, like I don't, I don't normally scream or do anything like that. So I'm very bad at reactionary commentary. So playing a game that I'm ultimately unfamiliar with is gonna have an issue of, well, I wait. Playing a game that I'm unfamiliar with is gonna have the issue of something really cool happens or something really interesting or plot important happens and I'm probably barely gonna say a word. So I have no idea if this is where I need to go. Play it one. Yeah, I know you're not forcing me to do anything. I mean, ain't nobody gonna control the Dave. But that's sort of what I was asking. It's just like, uh, it's an interesting game. Like it really is kind of fascinating. Because in the same way that it's kind of crap, like it really is kind of a bad game from a design perspective, it's fascinating at the same time. Also, there's this guy. 
Okay, this just went from competent to stupid. Holy crap, it's Abe from Abe's Odyssey. Or Oddworld. Your efforts achieve nothing. Yeah. If I've still got it downloaded, I'll actually show it in a bit. In fact, I think I'll show it pretty much now. Uh, I'm more interested in that than you. I'll just be honest. Now you don't... Oh. No, they just give you more ammo. Dude, you got two pythons. Like, all you gotta do is get to the surface and you can sell those for a very pretty penny. Anyway. Oh, look at that lighting. Wait. Save it. Um... I'm actually going to quit out and very briefly load up I, if I still have it. Yeah, I've still got it installed. Cool. We gonna play some I, not gonna know what I'm doing. I know you can't see anything immediately. Click on that. Now, if you notice, like the amount that uh, something like uh, Black Mesa edits the Source engine, like it's a vastly different looking affair. You'll notice that uh, this one looks like it was pulled a lot more directly from Half Life, but you can. Very easily tell that this is the Half-Life 2 uh, uh, menu. Um, I'm just going to launch the campaign. I don't remember what I was doing or where I was, but it's this game is freaking weird in a number of ways. Like, apparently its core theme is the cycles of guilt. But I never finished it because I couldn't figure out what to do. Like, there's always this point in the game where I literally have no idea what my next objective is. And no matter where I go, it always just gives me side quests or the optional quests. Of which there are hundreds. Like, there's, like, every time you spawn into a world, it gives you something to do. Oh, nifty. Now, it's a, it's a weird game, it's an RPG, and it, it doesn't have very good translation, like that right there, it's like, I killed my mentor and yet I'm not his murderer. Uh, that's apparently a very poor translation. <laughs> I forget, like... I, you kind of have to read a Wikipedia to understand what's going on here, which I've never done. I mean, everybody's like, well, it's just as bonkers in French as it is in its poor translation. So, if you look at this and it seems like it doesn't make any sense, trust me, it's not making any sense to me either. But one thing that is really cool about it is a very large portion of the game is already unlocked. So, I mean, uh, you can build, uh, you can build a lot of different kinds of characters. So, like, right now I have medium armor. Wait, light armor lets you move faster, reset equipment. You've got, like, your body, your legs, your feet. These are all storage areas. So, if you wanted to be a like a like a sniper you've got a ones with you've got different magazine capacities stuff like that this, stuff like this kind of broken and you have to load individual magazines as well so that can get kind of annoying but shotgun they got a 
freaking sawn off double barrel so you can have you can literally go in with a sniper rifle that has two levels of zoom and you're just like oh 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 i, I see you over there Whoop. and then it's suppressed as well now one thing is it has the uh a fairly realistic system or the a true to life system where instead of having reserve ammo you have magazines so like you see uh at the bottom i don't know maybe the res the stream resolution might be too low to even see it but i have 25 rounds in the magazine and then six magazines so whether you shoot the entire magazine or not when you reload you lose all that ammo so you have to kind of account for that but I said it's got a sawn off shotgun. You can do that. Now, I believe. I can't remember if this one loses ammo as well. So. 32. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Just you reload however many. That's weird. Anyway. But, um. It also has alternate fire, so in this case, you could either shoot... What the? Oh, yeah, you're also magical slightly, so you can spawn things and shoot fire and crap and hack doors. It's freaking weird, right? Hang on. I'm testing something out, because I think the alternate fire on this is firing both barrels at the same time. Yeah, that's when you really want to drop somebody. So... You can run around with, if you wanted to, you could complete a missile, missile, you could, comp you could complete a mission with nothing but a, uh, dual wielded pistols, a bunch of ammo, and you'll see at the top there, there you, you only lose 19% of your total movement speed, and you can go through and do this. You could play the game, the entire game, more or less like this. Just like going around. But again, you lose that ammo when you reload. So, you can be uh, a super slow minigun guy or, you know, a heavy sniper guy. But if you want to win, like if you seriously want to win and never want to have to deal with anything ever again this shotgun here is broken because not only is it accurate and i'm not it's like weirdly accurate but it has a 32 round magazine and it's i believe it's semi-automatic so um it's a good distance away, but so like there's those. So if there's, oh no, there's something coming toward me. Look at that grouping. You're, it's just gone. Whatever it is you were shooting at, it's gone. Say you don't like your own friends anymore, boom, they're gone. I, I don't wanna be attacked. This is like your headquarters. This is not a level, this is the, the hub world. So it's really cool. And shoot, if you want to, you can also have swords. You can be a ninja. And that in and of itself has like power attacks and stuff like that. You can block bullets out of thin air. It's got a million different things. That's not even talking about the character menu. Look at all this crap. <laughs> like this, like you got this stuff and your inventory, your cyber tech. In like a deus ex sort of thing so you've got implants you can buy and upgrade and that takes uh money to do so you've got things you can research like which will unlock benefits some of them are passive some of them are active this is just stuff your mission basically doesn't tell you anything here's your psionic abilities <laughs> so this is stuff you can buy and unlock the shortcuts this game is freaking nuts like this game is actually kind of on crack so but it is very fun 
especially when you discover it has weapons that they put in just because it's cool like a machine pistol that has a 100 round magazine and does this Uh, I guess whatever I was shooting at is now Swiss cheese. I think I just realized something about my audio settings. Hang on. No, it's just not that loud. Okay, never mind. Um, but, uh, oh. But this has an alternate fire mode. So instead of... Sh what the... Uh, okay, Siri started talking to me. <laughs> Weird. So instead of shooting this fast, eh, it took that long to get 40 rounds out. Well, there's an alternate fire mode on this gun, which means, um, oh look, there's literally anything in the universe. That was 100 rounds. That was, that, that was just it. So, I mean, uh, l let's say that this statue gave you... Uh, Dr. Pepper instead of Coke. It is now Swiss cheese. So it's got cool weapons and you might even notice that some of them are not available. These are the ones you can unlock. It doesn't, there's no hidden weapons. You do sort of, you unlock these weapons with money and skills and stuff like that. Certain enemies use you know, certain kinds of weapons and stuff like that. So, that's I. And that's one that I do want to play, and it's one that I try to get into. I know I didn't show the enemies and stuff like that, but that's, that's sort of for the playthrough. Because the, the enemies are freaking weird. <laughs> it's like you got werewolves and crap that show up, like these cyber werewolves. It's very French, let's put it that way. So, yeah. In a weird way, I don't want to stop streaming because I'm still sort of like kind of wanting to hang out. But on the other hand, I don't really have much else. I kind of want to take a break. And what went on there? But there's a, uh, I think it's about time for me to do something else. Very hot in my room for one thing. And if I open my door and put my air mover where it needs to be, the wind is, it, but the microphone is just going to sound like, <gasps> So, anyway, I am going to go ahead and close off this stream. Thank you very much for watching. As always, George, and I hope to see every, you and anyone else who is dumb enough to watch this in the future next time. Probably tomorrow, play a little bit more Black Mesa, probably play a little bit of I for the hell of it, and yeah. So long, farewell, and all that other stuff.